Hi, this is Keith Schneider, CEO of MarketGage.com, and this is November 13th edition of Market Outlook. Well, quite the week we had. Uh, surprise, surprise, surprise. So let's get into the details right away and just see what the markets are doing and how they're conforming to what the market action is. Well, remember we had been talking about the um, distribution versus accumulation. Well, we certainly cleared and reversed that trend this week. And what's really exceptional is just how strong the accumulation is in IWM. And again, I just want to reemphasize that our IWM is one of the best uh, indications of the U.S. economy uh, itself. So with uh, the market up um, for the week in the uh, Russell right here, over 10%, uh, that tells you uh, the big part of the story. So the outcome uh, of a changing of the guard with Trump coming in is that the domestic economy um, definitely leading the drive up in U.S. equities, and it's definitely, um, at least early indications, if this holds, an extremely positive sign, and it reverses a trend that had been in play where the Russell had really been the leading uh, lagging index turning into the more leading one. Also of note was the strength in some of the large cap stocks uh, in the Dow. So uh, the overall rotation is showing weakness in some of the more uh, uh, tech-driven uh, index uh, that has FANG, you know, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, and, you know, so th these are, uh, you know, high-tech stocks, uh, even though it was up 2%, definitely uh, lagging. So it just shows you uh, the shift underway uh, along with the uh, political shift that's driving it. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the sectors and what that's telling us as well. Now, what's interesting is uh, the there's a couple of things going on here. Uh, and hold on, let me uh, let me get rid of that. Just let me move up. The big thing that I want to point out is that this trend of the number of sectors up as the market was declining, right in here, uh, definitely reversed. You see, up over here, this tells you the number of sectors up um, versus down, and as you can see. Uh, we have reversed that trend since the beginning of November on this rally. So that is a positive sign. Number of sectors uh, was approaching uh, only up three um, over the last six months uh, with a positive return. That has smartly reversed, or three or four, and now it's back up to eight. So that's a positive sign. On top of that, let's look at uh, what's happening here. Semiconductors regained its bullish stance. That was our leading sector, moved back up. The other thing is financials, transportation, uh, obviously transportation, definitely uh, more related directly to the U.S. economy, uh, really got strong, uh, moving into third place here. Uh, semiconductors uh, had always been strong, and financials as well, and that's the prospect of rising rates, uh, you know, greater economic activity um, overall. So sector rotation is showing uh, a definite uh, improvement uh, in overall view here. So again, the reclaiming of the semiconductors of uh, bullish phase, really important. Uh, the gaining of the number of sectors up over the last six months also will help. And of course, the safe haven utilities also, uh, you know, had been actually going up or, or doing well um, as bonds had been under pressure, actually uh, did uh, fairly poorly um, and actually uh, also sort of a sign as a flight to quality. And that basically uh, retreated as well. So uh, overall, risk on is back on. Let's take a look at some specific hotspots here. Let's give this a moment to think. 
All right, again, just uh, focusing on big winners versus big losers. Uh, again, safe haven of gold and gold mining stocks. Um, took it on the chin. Look, gold miners um, down here. You can see five days uh, this week down 16%. Uh, another thing to note is going counter is metal and metal mining, which contains copper. That's up 11%. So it's interesting. Both uh, metals, but one going up almost 11%, the other dropping, which is in accordance with uh, gold as a safe haven. So interesting, gold, silver, more of the traditional safe haven metals getting hit hard as the market recovered, bouncing off, uh, excuse me, 200-day moving average uh, in the S&P. Um, and you got that huge move. And, you know, here we have it, things looking quite a bit different. So, um, again, uh, U.S. domestic stocks, us, U.S. relative to the rest of the world really outperforming, uh, and that also includes uh, currencies as well. So the dollar extremely strong. Okay, well, let's take a look at some of the market internals and just see how rich we're running now with this dramatic reversal. Um, okay, so first of all, taking a look at the S&P with uh, the McClellan oscillator, you can see we're now uh, had during the last couple of days, we had pointed, we were pretty much oversold and ripe for a bounce. Boy, did we get it. And actually, we started to get it well before uh, the actual uh, election came in. On Monday, we started to bounce already. Uh, so that was pretty interesting to begin with, right? The, you, you started to bounce Monday, Tuesday, you know, you sort of uh, had the follow through. So overall, things looking, you know, really strong here. And in fact, if anything, we're starting to hit oversold, uh, overbought levels on up-down volume. But in essence, uh, not really there uh, quite yet on uh, the McClellan oscillator, just really starting to build up some momentum across the midpoint, um, recovering from oversold levels and advanced decliners on the S&P, you got more to go here. And as long as we hold our 50-day moving average, which comes in around 214.50, that's an important level. I'd make sure that this one, you know, that we just didn't have a knee-jerk reaction. We should really hold somewhere around uh, this 214.50 or certainly the gap uh, that was created uh, earlier this week, which is about 211.50. So that number is important as well. So you got two levels of support to 1450, just uh, under this uh, gap here, which is about 21150 as well. But overall, we're definitely coming out above over, oversold levels um, and have plenty more on the upside uh, before we start running out of gas. Okay, let's take a look at our next chart, which is looking quite a bit different. This is the NASDAQ uh, composite. So NASDAQ composite, um, in essence, actually didn't, was, didn't really get close enough to the 200-day moving average like the S&P did that generated, uh, you know, that huge move off of it. So the, uh, the composite, although it did well, was not able to clear its 50-day moving average and in fact stopped here. So you've got an, a very important uh, zone to consider. We definitely uh, were uh, more uh, concerned about closing the week above the 50-day uh, moving average. We were not able to do it. We really want to see how this particular index acts relative to the, uh, to the S&P and the Dow. Um, again, pausing uh, or retreating after initially blowing through it. Um, and this has to do with a lot of rotation here. This is a, a really critical 
uh, type of scenario because uh, of the rotation that's going on between NASDAQ, the S&P, the Dow, and the IWM. So we would like to see this stronger. We don't mind passing the baton to the IWM, but we would like to see all these markets uh, regain its bullish phase. So far, composite is not there. Okay, let's take a look at a couple more indicators. What's interesting here, and th this is highly unusual, is the fact that we had 100 new highs and like 100 new 52-week lows. So this really is evidence of a dramatic shift underway in the marketplace right now among sectors. So, you know, the, um, so let me just highlight these things right here. All right, so the bottom line is, see right here, this gives you the um, absolute number of new highs to new lows. Uh, and yes, we are hitting more new highs, but we're also hitting a lot of new lows also, and this is part of the sector rotation. So that's important to note here. But overall, we're starting to hook up. Uh, situation is still uh, overall weak. I like to see this. Uh, certainly get above the midpoint here, uh, but we're not. So um, right now, uh, new highs versus new lows, I would give this certainly a negative on uh, this particular indicator, uh, even though uh, we did close uh, in price above the 50-day moving average, putting the S&P into a bullish phase. So market internals on this one, weak uh, regarding uh, new highs, new lows. Like to see that get uh, a bit stronger and at least cover and return above that 50 level. Okay, let's uh, let's go to the next chart. Um, interesting. So look, Nasdaq 100 closed beneath its 50-day moving average and right on its 10. Now, what we are doing is we are making a lot more new highs than new lows. Uh, in NASDAQ, and that's really a shift um, from certain stocks into others. But we did hit an oversold level, turned up. Um, that's sort of bullish. So I'm looking at this uh, change of the guard in uh, NASDAQ more as a positive, as we're certainly gathering a lot more new highs than new lows, uh, a little bit different than the S&P. So, you know, it's a mixed bag here, right? Because in this case, the NASDAQ 100 cap weighted with some of the bigger stocks that people are moving out of. You, you've got an issue here where uh, the, the chart itself is looking weak, but the market internals are stronger than the S&P, even though it's in a stronger position relative in terms of market phase. So mixed bag, but overall markets looking much stronger. Okay, got a couple more charts here. Volatility. Last week we had pointed out that the volatility um, would come back, of course, in line with the, the market if it rallied. It was running very frothy. We didn't know how far it would go, but obviously the market action pulled back inside. You got a dramatic drop in volatility. You're back now into uh, the mid part of the Bollinger Bands under the key moving averages. So again, uh, the market is not extremely uh, 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 frothy on the upside and uh, is overall positive with the, uh, the volatility index trading inside the bands under the key moving averages. This is now back into positive territory and supportive to the market. And again, we want to watch it because any move up here uh, of a couple percent uh, on the VIX could put it back over the 200 back over the 50, meaning the market uh, would be in play possibly on the downside as well. And again, on the S&P, we definitely are looking at this 50-day uh, moving average as a critical level, that 214.50. Okay, let's take a look at uh, one more chart. This is the spread between short-term, uh, one-month and three-month volatility. We got oversold. We had pointed it was starting to hook. We needed to get above 
this uh, one level here, which is uh, just moving uh, from deeply oversold back up to uh, a buy signal. We're on a buy signal. This is looking good. Plenty more room to the upside. Momentum of all the moving averages and the absolute number all trending up, looking to potentially uh, move into the upper regions here. So again, this move off the lows confirmed by the volatility indicators here or the spread uh, ratio between VIX and uh, uh, VIX and XVX uh, or v, uh, VXV. So those are the two symbols here that we're talking about. Um, and again, this definitely moving uh, from oversold uh, and bearish uh, pessimistic conditions back above to a buy signal. So that is uh, looking good. Momentum continues to be on the upside. Okay. Let's take a look at... Uh, oh, wait, we actually did this already, so um, we're, we're pretty much done. Um, hope this helps. So again, there's... Uh, more room to the upside uh, based on these indicators. You got a couple that are getting a little frothy, but remember when you get uh, from an oversold condition that we did to this type of overbought, a lot of times the overbought gets worked out by working its way sideways to even up. And again, you know, here is a, a perfect example of that type of scenario where, right, we came off of an oversold level. Um, we worked our way up. We got overbought on all of our three uh, type of it, uh, market internals. And yet, we still continue to go higher before we really started moving in concert beneath our midpoints on our three different indicators. We're not even close to that. So for now, it looks like markets back in play. You could have a lot more upside uh, uh, in store. Hope this helps. See you next week. Okay, well, I hope this helps. Laid out some uh, specific uh, reference points and the overall conditions of the market. Look forward to seeing you next week. And by the way, don't miss uh, this free presentation we put together. The link is in the Market Outlook text version. Uh, we cover some indicators and uh, concepts that will help you anticipate the next moves and the different rotation out of various assets. We also cover the uh, situation in NASDAQ stocks and the transition going underway there as well. So see you next week and bye for now.